So far in this series of rapid revision videos on medical science in the 20th century, we've covered a lot of real breakthroughs, but we've not been able to cover everything. So in this video, we're going to look at modern triumphs and remaining challenges, including things like heart transplants. And so that's where we're going to start. Christian Barnard and the human heart transplant. Dr. Christian Barnard was a South African surgeon specializing in cardiac or heart surgery. In 1967, he performed the first human heart transplant. The patient was dying, but only lived for 18 days after the transplant was given to them. But, and this is crucial, the heart transplant itself actually worked. The patient sadly died from another illness, which he caught as a result of having to take immunosuppressant drugs to stop his body rejecting the heart. In modern times, transplants have become quite controversial, but Barnard's work was the start of it. It is now possible to replace cancerous lungs with a transplant from a healthy donor. Liver transplants are also available, kidney transplants, and many more. However, this is raises a number of ethical problems if the, if the patient developed lung cancer after smoking for a long period of time, for example. Some people might argue, is it fair to give new lungs to someone whose lifestyle was the cause of their illness? Are they likely to look after their new pair of lungs? Another moral question can be asked of organ donation. Should useful organs be taken from the dead unless they opt out? Well, in recent years, that's the way that things have gone in Britain, but not everyone agrees with this. One of the biggest challenges still facing medical science is the treatment and cure of cancer. However, two treatments have been developed in the 20th century, which are a start, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So one of the most challenging illnesses to treat is cancer. However, modern techniques have advanced a long way and new methods are constantly being developed. Firstly, chemotherapy. During chemotherapy, patients are injected with many different drugs. These either shrink the tumor before surgery, prevent the cancer from reoccurring, or provide relief from the symptoms of things like lung cancer when surgery is not possible. There's also radiotherapy. In the radiotherapy, concentrated waves of radiation are aimed at the tumor to try and shrink it. Small tumours can be treated this way instead of with surgery. Larger tumours can be prevented from growing in this way. Radiotherapy can be administered as beams of radiation directed at the tumour from outside the body or by placing a small piece of radioactive material directly next to the tumour using a catheter, a very thin tube. This can have very unpleasant side effects though, and we've got a way to go before we can truly say that we've cured cancer. But you only need to look at survival rates today compared to 50 years ago to know how far we've come but also how far we've got to go. Another modern possibility is gene therapy. If you're unfamiliar with the basics of DNA and how it was discovered, I've got another rapid revision video on that, but genetic research is advancing all the time. It is not yet possible to use genetics to treat lung cancer. However, scientists have been studying the genes of lung cancer sufferers in order to help doctors prescribe more effective treatments. For example, some chemotherapy drugs work better in lung cancer patients whose tumours have a certain genetic mutation. The reason for this is not yet clear. However, it does show that treatment can be more effective if it is prescribed for the individual rather than on a one-size-fits-all basis. This idea of tailoring treatments to a person's DNA is a growing field in medical research and it's known as pharmacogenomics. It's a bit of a mouthful that, so hopefully I've said it right. Now to a remaining challenge, drug resistant illnesses. Think back to your studies. How effective was medicine in fighting infection before penicillin? The answer is not very. Some bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics, for example, MRSA. They are evolving and mutating so that they no longer get killed by them, partially because antibiotics are so commonly used. Scientists fear that an increasing number of germs no longer respond to antibiotics and without work to develop new drugs, some may not be treatable at all, returning us to a pre-antibiotic age and that is not somewhere where we want to go. However, much research is being done about this problem. But truth be told, the solutions haven't been found yet. So let's hope that science can keep one step ahead of drug resistant illnesses. Another remaining challenge relates to poverty and inequality, especially internationally. The life expectancy in the UK is 79. The life expectancy in the Central African Republic, on the other hand, is only 45. Such inequality was recently highlighted by the difference in the supply and administering of COVID-19 vaccines between richer and developing countries. So how might this be solved? 
Well, it goes beyond the remit of this video and indeed beyond the remit of the GCSE course to discuss that in too much detail. But think about the reasons why the life expectancy in the United Kingdom is so much higher. Think about the access to healthcare that we have in this country. Think about the NHS. Think about the access to modern medicines. But also think back to what things were like in the 19th century when we didn't have all these modern medical marvels. And in fact, you would find probably in the 19th century that life expectancy for adults in the UK was similar to how it is in the Central African Republic today. Perhaps we can at least agree to this. Let's hope that actually this is sorted out and that life expectancy grows around the world and not just in the developed world. Our final points then. Developments in medicine between the mid 20th century and the present have been rapid and dramatic. These include organ transplants, radiotherapy and chemotherapy to treat cancer, advances in genetic understanding. However, there are still many challenges. New and emerging or existing illnesses with no cure, including pandemic illnesses as we've seen in recent years, drug resistant germs and global inequality. But there's also the expense of modern medicine and how governments intend to fund it. The progress in the last half a century or so is still dramatic. So who can tell what the next 50 years will bring? Perhaps seeing this progress gives us, us a quite a lot of hope. That's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been useful to you. And if it has, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. But for now, I'll say thanks for watching and goodbye.